Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. This is the Sunday garden question and answer video that I do most Sundays of the month. The first Sunday of every month, I do a subscriber Sunday video where subscribers send in photos of things in their yard that they're proud of. If you want to send in an email for that, uh, this is the email address right here with your photos. Uh, make sure you turn your phone sideways and so it's a widescreen format for your photos and label the email sub, um, uh, subscriber photos or something like that so I know what the email is because I get lots of emails to that address. Uh, I had a good amount of questions from question and answer video that I did about a week and a half ago and then from the subscriber Sunday video um, for January. I had lots of good questions so thank you for participating uh, in that. Um, I got a, a started to get some started to get some things done in this yard uh, this this past week I went to you know out west um, if you followed me uh, on, on Instagram I went out west in a motorhome for two weeks and then I came back and I did about a week in uh, Connecticut and then since I've been back home it has rained and rained and rained and rained and uh, luckily I had some things shot so I've put up some videos but it has really poured um, I'm finally getting tulips in the ground tomorrow I think that's yeah, that's actually one of the questions on the list is when am I getting my tulips done? I've had mine in the refrigerator for uh, coming up, I mean, a month and a half or something like that. And I've wanted to get them in the ground as soon as I got back from Connecticut. But finally tomorrow, I think I have seven or eight dry days uh, on the forecast uh, this week. One of the reasons you clicked on this video might be for these uh, uh, Corona snips. Um, I will uh, go over how to uh, win these uh, at the end of the video. Uh, so let's get started on some questions. Uh, the first question uh, was about a flamethrower redbud. Uh, first of all, if I mention plant names on these Sunday videos uh, and I don't put up, put up photos or something like that, um, I probably have videos for them on my channel. I try to, on these question and answer videos, come out here and shoot this thing and, and, and have a vi one video a week that's kind of quick to edit. Um, it would take me hours to go find photos of these flamethrower redbuds. But I did a, a flamethrower redbud video at Danny Werner's house uh, at the end of summer. He's the person who actually introduced the plant. Uh, and so uh, if you're interested in learning more about flamethrower redbuds, it's on the channel. This person's in 8B and uh, they're wanting to put it in full sun. And I think that's gonna be too much sun, especially in 8B. I think maybe in seven uh, where Denny had his planted next to his house, uh, probably gonna get sun two thirds of the day, something like that. Uh, but we're in zone seven and this person's in 8B. So I think uh, where you are, you're probably gonna want, want to put it in a place that's gonna get lots of morning sun or lots of late, late day sun, um, but not a lot of uh, 12 to two. So somebody acquired some small hollies uh, in little containers. The variety is called Wirt L. Wynn. It was one I used to grow uh, at my nursery. It's a uh, Wirt uh, L. Wynn, like somebody's name. Uh, and uh, I had mentioned in the, past, in the past that you can actually push hollies, you can get them to grow faster than other, so, some, some other plants without worrying so much about uh, over, over pushing them. Uh, and uh, they're going to be putting them in some containers, trying to grow them out and sell them later and wanted to know how to make them grow fast. You really, if you're going to grow container plants um, and, and want to push them during the season and, and then sell them, you know, by fall, let's say you're, you're trying to, you're trying to sell them, uh, by fall, uh, you really do need a nursery fertilizer. Um, and there's probably a landscape supply place near you or a, um, farm supply place or somewhere probably in your area that supplies nurserymen with plastic for their greenhouses or irrigation parts or fertilizers for their containers. If they're filling in, most nurseries are going to buy it bulk, you know, from the, from the fertilizer manufacturers. But, um, um, Occasionally you need a bag here, a bag there that you don't have. So somewhere in your area, you can probably uh, find a nursery fertilizer, but that's what you need. And you can use the high rate um, on hollies. There's just not a fertilizer. When you're talking about growing uh, nursery container plants, you're gonna have to water them nearly every day during the summertime, every day during the summertime. And uh, fertilizers that you were to buy off the shelf at, um, let's say Home Depot, are not made for that. They're not, you, you would, you, you would, the fertilizer would be gone very, very quickly. Um, they're, they're not, the, pr the prill is just, the prill is just different. Nursery fertilizers can basically, like Florican, for instance, which was one that I used um, at my nursery, was actually developed for rice. <laughs> so you can imagine it actually literally was a fertilizer meant to be uh, submerged uh, in the water and still last six or eight or nine months. So that's what you need. You need to acquire some sort of nursery fertilizer. Scott's is in the nursery fertilizer business. Floricane, um, Harrell's 
Uh, if you ever bought green, that was little green prills, uh, they use that same technology in a, co a company called Harrell's for nursery fertilizers. But somebody near you um, would have them if you're actually interested in growing plants, uh, container plants for sale. Uh, that's what you need. Okay, somebody asked me about how my zoysia grass is holding up in the winter, and it's finally gone dormant. Uh, it looks great. Um, the, the area that's probably a little off the camera back this way, um, it's got a little poana in it that I need to pull. Well, it's a weed, an annual weed. And it's staying a little wetter there, and footprints are causing a thinning problem right there. The rest of it is fantastic. Uh, I'm trying to keep the foot traffic off of it. That's the main thing, especially this first winter. The front yard just looks great. It's thick, and nobody's on it. So, you know, the less traffic any turf gets, the better it's going to be. But uh, back here is definitely a little bit thinner just because of the amount of rain. It's just been, it's been ridiculous. I mean, it's a dormant plant. Uh, like any other dormant plant and it's now it's sitting in water so it's not happy um but okay um uh, somebody has an empress of china dogwood i have one in the front yard here another plant that i have a uh, oh and I, I have a sod video for the zoysia sod that went down um the empress of china dogwood has has is yellowing um I, again i got a, a video for empress of china dogwood it's a chinese evergreen dogwood fantastic plant one in the front yard here um, mine did the same thing and initially uh, going it plants that we call evergreen <laughs> most every plant uh, loses leaves at some point that empress uh, my two years or three years of now having that empress of china dogwood i now know uh, that it kind of sheds <laughs> at, at a funny time um, going into winter so it sheds about you know a third of its leaves or so so I, I had that same thing happen it's already all those yellow leaves are gone now and it looks great um, but azaleas you know as they're blooming uh, in the spring uh, will lose some leaves um, they're, they're, sometimes even even now this privet uh, right here it's absolutely you know it's always got leaves on it but it will go through a period in the late winter early spring where it'll drop half the leaves um, but th they all do that but I've noticed that that Empress of China dogwood does it going right into winter it looks like it's going to lose its leaves and then it only loses about a third um okay somebody okay this is a good one somebody has a butterfly bush and they've just allowed it to get to 12 feet tall over the years and now want to know about cutting it down uh, i had i've had one like that and they actually at 12 feet i'm surprised that it actually hasn't fallen down on its own because they will crack apart uh, once they get a certain amount of weight up top the wood down at the bottom is just never strong enough to hold something up like that so you're lucky you've made it this far I would not cut that down to 18 inches, which would be my recommend. I got a butterfly bush right here next to me. It's going to go down to about 18 inches, you know, February 15th, something like that. There's another one right, right there. It's going to go down to maybe even this one back here, maybe even 12 inches. Uh, the one you have, I would probably just cut it in half initially. And then as it starts to come back out in the spring, uh, it's quite possible it won't put new growth out from the old, old wood down at the bottom. And so find out where the new growth will come from, and then you can cut it again, uh, if this makes any sense. I would take it down from 12 feet to 6 feet in February. And then when it starts to leaf out in April, uh, wherever it's leafing out from down at the bottom, you can go down and cut just above that, okay? Um, but don't initially cut it down that far because it's possible it won't re form it will they'll they'll sucker from the roots so you'll probably get new root suckers but that wood may be so old now that it won't give you new uh, material right away so cut it in half wait for it to leaf out and then cut it down again just above that new growth um, that'll tell you where you can cut it back to um okay um somebody asked me they had seen edgeworthia uh, or paper bush and uh, wanted to know how to uh any tips or pointers uh, on it. Uh, Edgeworthy is one of my uh, favorite winter flowering plants. They're budded up now uh, to bloom. They'll bloom here in the next few weeks. Kind of a strange looking flower. If you go back to the um, tour I did at um, Dr. A's house a few weeks ago, the very last plant he's standing at is, a, uh, is an Edgeworthy. Uh, um, and he, ta he talked about it uh, in that video. Super, super fragrant. They just wanted to submit for basic information on it. For whatever reason, I don't have an Edgeworthy video. I'll do one in the next few weeks when they bloom. There'll be an Edgeworthy video soon enough, but the only thing with it is it needs to be mounted up some. They need um, well-drained soil. So um, if you do get an Edgeworthy and you're planting it in, in an area like mine where it's part clay, uh, you do need to mound them up several inches. The best Edgeworthy over here at the J.C. Ralston Arboretum are actually in raised beds. 
uh, they, 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 they built raised beds and you know, they're like the centerpiece of the raised bed. There's a lot of them in my neighborhood that look pretty good, but I have an oak savanna here. These oaks tend to keep everything on the dry side and I think that helps with Daphne and Edgeworthia, which have similar issue with root rot. Uh, somebody asked me about the tulip planting and I said I'm doing that tomorrow. I hope to have that video up even tomorrow. Um, somebody asked me about my mics and my camera equipment. Um, this is a Rode mic uh, that I have here. Um, th this one is not inexpensive. This is Rode Link mic. I've had this though for three and a half years. It has shot, you know, I've got 850 videos on the channel and I've got another whatever that I've done for other companies and that kind of thing. And this thing is, um, you know, industrial, but this is a road link mic, um, heavy, heavy, super heavy duty thing. And, uh, I've tried some other ones, but this one I can drop and not worry about. And I have a Canon EOS R5. It's brand spanking new. I bought it back, uh, as soon as it was released in the late summer, early fall, it's not an expensive camera, but this is my, this is, you know, I shoot videos every day and I used an, um, uh, before this, I had a Canon 80D, which was about a three or four year old camera before I bought um, this one. But this R5 is just a crazy good camera and I'm not even using it to its potential. I'm not even skilled enough to use it to its potential. So it's probably a waste of my, uh, uh, you know, probably a waste uh, for me to own this camera. But anyway, it's a Canon EOS R5 and a Rodelink mic. I think it sounds pretty good. Um, the video's definitely crispier than it was, you know, six months ago. Okay, um, somebody asked me about using pine chips as mulch. Uh, they have a, uh, had a pine taken down and then it was chipped up. You can use it as mulch on the top, uh, no problem. I used wood chips that were from this uh, maple that was taken down in the front yard and some other tree work that was down the street um, in this backyard initially. It's fine. I wouldn't have used it in my vegetable garden because um, I wouldn't want it incorporated in until it broke down a little bit. But it breaks down super quick on the soil they wanted to know if they needed to keep it for a while before they used it it's totally fine on the top don't bury plants up you know up on their stems and that kind of thing with um wood that just came off you know was cut down off a tree but if you're just going to do three or four inches of mulch that wood chips can go right out uh, immediately it doesn't hurt it doesn't hurt anything uh just don't incorporate it into the ground where there's not oxygen down there for it to break down easily uh, initially you know once they're broken down some you can use it for that too um Okay, uh, breaking, things that break, are breaking down like that use nitrogen, and so they will yellow your plant some, and that's always been the thing about why not to do it. It's probably slightly overblown. I mean, it's only gonna initially yellow something. Once it's actually broken down, it'll start giving, giving that nitrogen back uh, to the plant. So, um, but again, don't mix it in, put it on the top. Uh, somebody's putting a river birch next to their gravel driveway and wanted to know if it would cause a problem. Obviously, those roots are going to run everywhere. That's what river birches do. Um, they don't tend to be as surface rooted um, as like maples and that kind of thing. The roots will run all over the place. I mean, you'll find your um, a river birch will have roots 50 feet away from it, uh, but they're not necessarily up on the surface. And so they don't think they're going to cause like a ridging in your gravel. And I think you driving over it all day, those roots are probably going to choose to go a different direction because you're compacting the soil so much. I doubt it'll be a problem. Um, what'll be more of a problem will be the leaf drop um, because um, river birches tend to drop leaves two times a year. They leaf out, like grow like crazy in the spring. And then about June, they tend to drop about 30% of their leaves and then in the fall they'll drop them again. So if you have a gravel driveway and you're concerned about your gravel having leaves in it, um, that will be, a, that'll be your bigger issue. Uh, somebody, um, I'll stop. Um, well, I'll, I'll, t I'll do two, two more quick things before I announce um, how to win the uh, pruners. Um, somebody asked me about the ads on YouTube and if there was a way to pay to not have the ads. Yeah, there's a YouTube um, premium, which I've had for a long time because I have YouTube Music, which is the same as Spotify or Apple Music or whatever, same price and everything. But uh, YouTube Music includes uh, not just music, but also um, uh, YouTube Red, which means you don't have to watch ads on YouTube. And I think you have to do this based on the priority of view to how, what is YouTube to you? Um, for me, I watch sports number one, YouTube number two, and then all other whatever, uh, Netflix or whatever after that. So for me, YouTube is pretty high 
uh, on my list and so I do pay to not have ads and it's wonderful <laughs> and the money that you pay for YouTube Red goes to the to the people that you watch and so if you're watching me or watching whoever you watch on YouTube it's still going to get paid um, just from the YouTube Red money instead of the uh, uh, from the ad revenue but it's it's a wonderful place to be um, and then somebody asked me about my uh, nursery property um, when I closed the old nursery, I actually have nursery property. I actually have a piece of property in Johnston County that I was going to move the nursery to. And uh, at the last minute, I just kind of decided I was over um, building a new nursery. Uh, it's not something I wanted to do um, going into my 50s. And uh, so, and they were just asking if I still had it. Yes, I still have it. I actually thought about shooting video over there at some point, but it'd be the most boring video in the world. It's, it's acres and acres and acres of trees. <laughs> and I do have about a 1,200 foot creek that runs along the side of the property. So I have about 1,200 feet of water that runs along the side of it. That would be the only interesting part, and it's just a creek running <laughs> next to a piece of land. And so I don't know if anybody would ever want to see it, but uh, anyway, I th I'd consider going and putting a drone over it, but literally it'd be like the drone over the trees right here. It wouldn't, I don't know if it would be, it's not really interesting, but I do have a piece of property that I've maintained in Johnston County, which is just down the road from me, to build a nursery and have decided um, that's just not for me and I'm just keeping the land. There was one additional question I had written down. Somebody had grown a hibiscus uh, in the house. It was that uh, same hibiscus that I grew out here in the uh, backyard uh, earlier this year, but they started the seed too early and now it's super tall and skinny in the house and wanted to know if they could just cut it back. Yeah, I would just go ahead and, and cut the thing in half as long as it's branched below that point. Don't cut it below a branch. So cut it down to, you know, make sure there's still some side branching on it wherever you cut it to and then keep it in lots and lots of light you probably don't have enough light in a house for hibiscus uh to grow uh, in the winter time that's going to be your issue it's going to obviously stretch again okay so let's talk about these uh, uh corona snips uh right here um these are actually fruit snips they got that little bend uh in them right there but they're great for deadheading and uh, doing propagation and that kind of thing all right if you'll go over to my uh instagram and um uh, uh, I'll have some sort of photo with me holding these uh, this morning. Make a comment below that. Um, you'll have a chance to win one of the pairs. And then below this video, you can ask a question for a question and answer video or just say uh, whatever. It doesn't matter. Any comment uh, on this video will register you for the other um, chance to win. And next Sunday, uh, I'll announce the winners. And I may start another one immediately after that. I have about 12 of these uh, inside the house. And... Uh, uh, 12 more than I need <laughs> and uh, so I think I'm just going to give them away uh, every weekend for a little while so again go over to Instagram subscribe to my Instagram I'm almost at 10,000 on Instagram I don't know why I'm so much more excited about my 10,000 on Instagram than the 100,000 on YouTube I have no idea why it's it's, it's, a, it's an obsession I think uh, but uh, anyway uh, follow me on Instagram uh, make a comment below that uh, and the same thing over here. And thank you guys for watching and uh, participating uh, in the videos.